Hey guys, Kev here, and I have three quick rapid reviews to do for you. Two knives and a flashlight. First one is the Boker Plus Urban Trapper Premium. And uh, this was graciously loaned in by Blade Ops, so definitely check out Blade Ops. My link is down below. Does help the channel if you use that link. Um, but yeah, it's listed down below. They have a lot of cool stuff over there. Um, they're sending me the new Riot XO M, uh, the locking version. Um, and they get all the Spyderco stuff and uh, other cool items as well. And they also carry Boker, which I have not been interested in in a long time. But um, this model I kept being asked to check out because it is made by Riot. The OEM on this is Riot, which is intriguing. Now, that does mean it's going to be pricier. Pretty sure this is somewhere around $300 or more. And um, it does feel worth that. Now, I'm not a big G10 guy. This is an exclusive, I think, to Blade Ops, which is cool. So if you're into this black out with JG10 look, this one's for you. It is T8 all around. I did double check that. We have the Brad Zinker logo, M390. The model number right there, 0429. And the Boker Plus right there. So a little... Uh, bit of billboarding. I did have some people comment on my Instagram reel or post that this looked like a Pena ripoff. Um, I don't see that at all. So I don't know what model from Pena this looks like, but uh, I can, I can say right away, this looks like a Brad Zinker. Uh, Brad Zinker has been around for a while and uh, Boker was doing the Urban Trapper for a long time with a flipper tab and they just did a version with a sort of front top flipper. And so to me, this is just a Brad Zinker urban trapper. I don't see the Pena thing. Um, not sure what that's all about, but I wanted to mention it in case you see it. Let me know. This paddle clip is absolutely atrocious. It is ugly as sin. It's kind of flat in the hand, but because it's so wide, you can feel the edges and then it's very tight getting in pocket. Um, I did have one other kind of major issue with this knife. The first time I tried to put it in my pocket, I went to push it in and it was so tight it wouldn't pop over the seam. So I put my finger here and I pushed the uh, knife into my pocket. Well, I put enough pressure in that my thumb actually hit that tip and I felt this like piercing you know, like a poke into my finger. I was like, ow, what the hell is that? And I was like, oh shit, that was the tip. So look how close that is. Um, I don't know if my lighting is, let me just uh, bring it in a little bit here for you guys. There we go. Maybe that's a little better. Can you see that? So it's pretty close to the end right there. You can get to it if you do this. It's not like sticking out to where you're just going to grab it. But apparently if you put enough pressure with your thumb, you'll hit it. Is that an issue? I don't know. But for me, it got me and it kind of bothered me right away, you know. Um, so the uh, aesthetic, I think it looks good other than the clip. I wish it was fat carbon. That would be dope. You do have uh, PVD titanium JG10 PVD M390. Um, yeah, good looking knife. I like the way they did the front flipper, actually. It's sort of uh, kind of like the knife uh, we're doing with Devo, the Buzz. Ours comes back a little further, but it's kind of got this wheel uh, thing. So it actually is very similar. Um, it doesn't come back as far, so it's a little harder to do the reach around, but uh, you can definitely get it. Um, the uh, Ergos are comfortable. Feels good in the hand. Like I said, you can feel that clip a little bit if you bear down, but it's not like a hot spot or anything. It's, it's flat, but I can just feel it because it's so fat. I can feel the clip on such a thin knife. It's just weird that the clip is fat. Like I just think on a design like this, the clip should be thin too, you know? Uh, but that's just me. Uh, but the ergos are good. Uh, the size is interesting. This knife is a little too big for me. And that's why back in the day when I was kind of into, um, uh, when I tried a couple bokers, I tried the FR flipper and not the urban trapper because it was just too big. Here's a three and a quarter inch, uh, synapse. I can actually grab another one I have. And you can see the difference the camera's making because it's the same knife, top and bottom. Um, and they are 
a little bit shorter than the uh, Urban Trapper. You can see the handle sticks out and the blade just slightly does stick out past those synapsi. The synap synapses? Yeah, it's just synapses, Kev. Come on. Um, we have the F5.5 and we have the Quiet Carry 9. There you go. About the same size as the 9, maybe slightly bigger than the 9. So if that helps you at all. But obviously a thinner knife overall in this sense. In this sense, they're about the same. So there you go. Some size comparisons for you. Um, oh, <laughs> put the wrong knife away. Oh, boy. Been a long day, guys. Um, so cutting. I didn't really cut anything with this because it's a loner and it's not mine. So you got to take that with, you know, a grain of salt. It is a really nice hollow grind. So it's a thin stock. Then you have a hollow grind. Then you have Riot doing it. So let's just, you know, real quick, get a measurement here behind the edge. It's going to be thin is what I'm, I'm going to go ahead and call it at 14. Eight. 10. 12. And I'm like, I'm way past the edge there. And getting 12. And I was pinching it like right here. So that's, yeah, it's thin, guys. It's going to cut really, really well. Now it's kind of dainty, right? Like I can flex the blade. So, you know, you're not going to want to do hard use with this. But if you're doing your everyday kind of EDC or cutting some cardboard or whatever, this guy's probably going to destroy that task really well. So I uh, got to give him props on that one. Um, carry, we kind of talked about clip sucks, way too tight, ugly, too fat, uh, finger can get poked, a uh, lot of things going on there with the carry, but it is very slim, light, I mean, it's really light for the size, and, uh, it does carry well once it is in your pocket, but, uh, it is a bit of a pain to get in your pocket, so, um, yes, you could take this clip off and bend it. You would have to get it in from the, or get it off from the outside or the inside. Sorry, the screw is there. It doesn't go through or anything. Uh, well, at least I don't think it does. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Um, so you could bend it, but I'm guessing if you bent it to where it wasn't too tight, you'd be tapping. So if you're okay with the tapper, then you're fine there. But I will admit that knives tend to be uh, knife to knife when it comes to uh, being too tight in the pocket. I'll get another one of these and it'll be perfect. So it really just comes down to the example you get. I wouldn't let that necessarily stop you, you know. Um, all right. Action slash fidget factor. Well, I can talk about sounds real quick. Very good. Uh, six, seven out of ten. It doesn't have the best closing sound. Something I've picked up as a uh, pet peeve from my business partner, Colin. He is really particular about his detent snicks on the close. And this one's really dull. Like what you want is, let me see if this one does it. Yeah, you hear that? Nice, crisp, sucks it in, oink. Um, this guy's just kind of a, a dull, and it's because it has a weaker detent being it's a, it's a front flipper, you know? Um, so action slash fidget factor. This guy's really good in this category. If, here's the, cate the uh, caveats, there's two. Uh, one, you don't have sweaty-ish hands like me. And two, you have larger hands. So my large glove size hand is not quite big enough to really enjoy this. It's fine, but I wish my hand was like an XL. And so a smaller version of this, like a three-inch version, would be perfect. Um, but that's not what this is, right? So the reason I say that is because you have to get up here to the top flipper and get a good crisp deployment on it, right? 
So when you're doing that, you also want to hold the knife down here. You want to hold the clip so that you can get to it. And my thumb just has to do a lot of reaching uh, to get it. Uh, where a smaller knife, I don't have to worry about that. Like, say, this uh, Cavill Knives uh, Denka, which I freaking love this thing. But you see how small it is? I can nestle, and then my finger is, like, right here. And I could just pop a front flipper all day on that. Where this, my spot would be, like, right here. But I have to reach all the way up to here, and then I'm stretched out, and it's just a little awkward. It makes it feel like I'm going to drop the knife sometimes. Now, I can get used to it, and it's fine. I'm a little better at it left-handed, um, even though I don't have that clip. I think just because I am left-handed, I have a little bit more dexterity. But um, I don't love the size. And then on top of that, it's not just that it's big or you know longer this way. It's not big, but longer this way. It's very skinny. And that makes adds a, another element to it that I don't love um, when I'm trying to deploy it. With all that said, though, it is very fun. Um, it's just a reason that I personally wouldn't buy one of these is, you know, one of the reasons is that it's a little too long and skinny. Now, another reason is this jimping is just not strong enough. It needs to be uh, a little bit more uh, grippy. It's just, I don't know, like it works. You know, you got to bear on top of it and flick it. But, you know, you'll see me slip right over it. And it's not like it has a very strong detent. So I'm just slipping off. Um, but you can manipulate it. It works. Um, but I wish it was a little bit more aggressive. I do not wish it had the front flipper deal going on. Like, you can roll it. Just roll it back like this. I like these wheel designs. Um so there you go you can do the uh, rollback not my favorite move but you can do it you can do reach around and then of course you have the top big lighter style flick so you have a lot of options closing action really good swings down drops shake um it has broken in nicely there's a little bit of play a little bit of up and down um my biggest gripe on the knife is there's some lock stick slash grab I gave it time to break in. I've been cleaning the lock face there or the tang and transferring alcohol over. It's just not going away. So would it, if I took it apart and cleaned everything and put alcohol on here, wiped it all clean? Yes, I'm pretty sure it would go away. But it does suck to get a knife from factory with stick like this and then have to do your own surgery, you know, disassembly before you ever really need to. Personally, you know, I'm going to put skips in it anyway, so it doesn't bother me. But um, a lot of people out there don't want to have to take their knife part right away. And they might not know how to. They might not want to. They might not want to have lockstick from factory, you know. Um, but then again, it's not the worst. It's not, like, hard to push over or anything. But, you know, I got to tell you everything. So that's the Boker Knives uh, Boker Plus Urban Trapper Premium. All in all, it's it's really good. Um, I think if this design is up your alley, if you're okay with this clip and you have larger hands, um, I think you're really going to like this. And I can honestly say it's a boker I could recommend. You know, if you were just like, dude, I really like that. I want to pick it up. Can I trust it? I'd be like, yeah, it's Riot. You're going to be fine. Yes, there's some little uh, nitpicks with the tip and the jimping and the lock stick on this particular one. But this is the first knife from Riot that I've had actual, like, stick on that didn't just go away. And I didn't even get to take it apart and clean it. So, yeah. That is the Boker. Check the link down below from Blade Ops. Big shout out to them. Thank you for loaning this in. The next one is going to be the flashlight, and then I'm going to finish up with a, a cool one. So this is the PowerTac M5. So this is another company I do have an affiliate link for down in the description. They hit me up and said, hey, do you want to check out this flashlight? If you don't like it, no worries. Just let us know. If you do like it, um, then cool, do a review or whatever. So I got it, and I was like, all right, I like it. It's just not my style of flashlight. So I thought, looking at the picture, which is hard to gauge, that it was smaller. Here's my daily flashlight. CWF Micro Arcadian, okay? Um, this 
is kind of, I thought it would be a little bit bigger than this. It's clearly triple the size or whatever, you know, if you count thickness and everything. Um, this right here is going to have a max output of 650 lumens. This guy, you can tell right there, is uh, much brighter. That's probably not even, yeah. So there's your highest setting. I believe it's 2300 lumens. So um, you're obviously going to get more output than you would on the CWF. But for everyday carry and whatnot, that light works for me fantastic. I swapped the battery out every two weeks, and it has like one bar left at that time. It's a 10440. I just I use it for a, probably a total of like five minutes a day, and it lasts uh, plenty. So this is the M5 from PowerTech. It's got really good ergonomics. It feels really good in the hand. It's got good grip. If you're going to use this for you know, work, um, say, you know, you're a night shift worker or something like that. You need a flashlight or a backup light or something like that. I think this would work really well. It does have this sort of whatever you call this bezel that you could smack stuff with, um, which I think is dumb, but you know, it's gotta be there, I guess. Um, they were smart and they put these little, uh, guys on the side so that you can tail stand. So a lot of times, like the CWF, you get a light like this and you can't tail stand it because the button sticks out. Another good example of that is a review I just did is the Through Night Archer Pro. Love this flashlight, but you can't tail stand because the switch is right here. And this switch is easy to depress in your pocket. Um, I need to put this on like moonlight or something. Jesus. There. Uh, here's a size comparison of the Archer Pro. There you go. Uh, I don't have a price on this, so I apologize. I believe it's made in China, so it's probably going to be a, you know, eighty dollar flashlight or something like that. I have the packaging right here. Whoops. I don't think it's super expensive or anything. You can see made in China, but here's the information if you want it. Bada bing, bada boom. Did I say 2300? It's 2030. Non-aggressive knurling. Compact for pocket carry. Low battery indicator. And it does charge like that, which is really cool. So I'll show you that in a second. Right here, you pop that little guy on and it charges the other end of it, I believe, is a USB-A. Um, yeah. So the clip is fine. It's, you know, it's kind of low shallow carry but that's kind of how people want their flashlights so they can draw it click it you know um there's one drawback that I, I don't like about this light and it's the fact that the tail switch is just a on off and momentary on so the reason i say that is because you switch it on and then you have to use this to cycle and i think that's the same let me grab a couple comparisons for you So this is going to be a really good comparison, I think. And then I have this. So this is the Baton Pro from Olight. I've had this for years. This one I've had for a couple of months. This is my nightstand light. This is my desk light here because it has a magnet. Well, they both do, but I like using this as a magnet. Um, as you can tell, I've used it for dumb shit. So size-wise, there you go. This guy is a bit bigger than the Baton Pro and a bit smaller than the Warrior 3S. So this guy is not really a comparison because it doesn't have a tail switch at all. It's just, you know, normal use. You use the uh, side button. So let's talk about the Warrior 3. You have a tail switch. You can tail stand it. It does have a magnet back here, which is cool. It has a lot of cool features. This one, I don't think is no. Um, so with this, you can power on. It does have proximity sensors, which is cool. Not that it's working right now. Uh, but there we go. Now it's working. Maybe it was working. Um, from a normal range, I can click on and that's it. Right. I can also momentary on. So this is a normal function of a flashlight like this. So it's not just the power tack. It's 
most of the flash tactical lights like this they're really just meant to do a, a, a quick on or a on off right and then you use the switch down here to get your mode that you want right and then you can turn it off whoops off and then on off again doesn't this control I hate the proximity it really just throws me off put it on moonlight and then click the back and we're on a high mode so that's what i don't understand that's what one thing i don't like about this light is it it's always on well there it is how do i sorry it always goes to a brighter setting than what i want You know what I mean? Like, I had it on Moonlight. I would like to keep it there. But it just switches to that. I don't know. That's frustrating that I just can't figure that out. It's cool that when I need it, I just, you know, and it works. But this one, you click on, and it actually stays on whatever you had it on. And then you tap. It's a little bit, honestly... A little bit easier interface than this. Um, I'm still trying to figure this out. And the proximity thing kind of makes everything frustrating when I'm trying to make this video. But um, this is just very simple. On and then cycle through low, medium, high, right? Or uh, moonlight, low, medium, high. And then you click back off here. I just wish that these tail switches also cycled. Like I wish you could just hold down and then it would cycle through. You know, or you could double... I don't know. I just wish you could do stuff like that. I'm going to try double tap. See, nothing happens. So let's turn on double tap. I don't know if that... Triple tap uh, warning. Yeah, so I don't see a strobe mode or anything like that. I'll try to hold down. Oh, there it is. So holding down is your strobe. Right? So, cool. You do have a strobe mode. Um, yeah, so I think it's cool. I think it works. It's got good knurling. It's, it's a bit tactical and it's a little bit old school looking in the, you know, design, but it works really well. And, um, I've had this for, you know, two weeks maybe, and I've never charged it <laughs> and we've used it quite a bit. My kid has run around with it, supervised. Um, you know, we've used it for stuff around the house and it's been really good. So, um, that's the PowerTac M5. If you're interested, there is a link down below. Now, the last one is the uh, Winter Blade Mirage. And this one I did an unboxing on, and I feel like, I don't know, I, I don't think I need to do a full review. There's The pre-order's over. There's nothing really like, you know, I'm not hyping anything up. And, um, I like this knife. I enjoyed, uh, you know, I carried it for a couple days to really feel it out. And I, I enjoyed my time with it. There's some things that, um, you know, I don't personally love. So I, you know, I don't think I would get one. Um, but it's really cool. And it's definitely way more intriguing than I anticipated. I thought I wasn't going to like the assisted thing at all. I thought the detent was going to feel really weak. And, um, you know, it works really well. So aesthetically, it's not really my bag. It, it has this drop point blade or straight back blade. It's a drop point. Um, the hole design is interesting. Um, the, the handle design, it's, I don't know. It just doesn't speak to me. I'm not into the, the, the really cyberpunk futuristic stuff. And that's kind of what Brian does a lot, which is, you know, that's perfectly fine. People love it. The factor really spoke to me because of the sheep's foot blade. It really works because of that. Um, this it just doesn't speak to me as much. Um, yeah. So there's that. Um, and then you have this really nice weave carbon fiber in all these places. Um, Brian's one of the only people that can use weave carbon fiber and make it look really good. Um, usually it's just like, oh, why didn't they use fat carbon, you know, but in the way he does it, it's really nice. The construction's really cool. You, you do unfortunately have T6s. I don't know why he's rocking T6s on all his knives. 
um, pivots T8, but I don't know. I feel like at this level of knife and everything, we should be using T8. I really don't think there's any reason for T6, but that's just me. Um, this is one of the strongest locks, I believe. It has a steel backspacer, which is part of that. Um, keeps it really locked up. Um, it uses the M-lock system that pops into place. Um, and it's been tested, and it's it's super strong. Um, now, I don't know if anybody's hung a car off it or anything, but um, I've given it some wackaroonies, and I've had no issue or anything like that. Um, you know, you have Mirage down here, and then... The blade is clean, so I think that's really nice. You don't have a ton of billboarding or anything like that. Um, the centering is slightly off on this. Uh, it's over to this side a little bit. But um, this prototype's been around the world, I think. Um, it's not super sharp. I tried stropping it. I can get it to kind of... It is kind of cutting into my fingers, but for some reason it's just not cutting paper really well. Um, which is whatever, you know, who cares? It's going back to Brian anyway, and then he can, you know, sharpen it up or do whatever, but it's a prototype, so I don't expect it to be factory sharp. Uh, but I did use it a little bit. I cut some laundry detergent <laughs> sheets. Um, I opened a couple packages and I think I cut like a piece of cardboard or something and it's, it's fine. You know, it does what you want it to do. Relatively thin stock. Full flat grind. I mean, it's going to cut. It's going to do a good job. Best tech, M390, all of that works, right? Ergonomics. Um, it's it's okay. I think it's better than the Factor uh, because the Factor was wider and thinner. And so this one has a little bit more meat, and it's just a little bit more knife-shaped, I guess. So it feels pretty good. Uh, Right-handed is better than left-handed. Uh, there's a clip here that is not reversible. I got to give them... Uh, Negative brownie points for that. I don't know why you didn't do the reversible clip. It could have worked. You could have included another clip. Something, right? Um, especially because he did it on the factor. I just thought, you know, the fact that it is very ambidextrous. Um, this one's actually easier to use left-handed. Uh, just the placement of everything. The way your hand falls. Um, on the factor, you kind of had to worry about hitting the lock and stopping the blade. Um, on this one, it kind of is lower than on the factor. At least that's how it is for me. Um, so I do wish that it had a, uh, reversible clip. And I think just having a second clip would have worked, you know, and for, you know, 300 and what is it? Uh, 375 bucks or whatever. I think, you know, you could throw that in. It's titanium, but I don't know. Um, just some thoughts there. What else? Um, ergos. So we were talking about ergos. They're, you know, it's a winter blade knife. So it's not meant, it's not a Voxnez or whatever, where it's like made for really good ergonomics, right? It's made to look cool and have a really unique uh, magnetic feature and be cyberpunky, right? So with that comes, you know, some downsides ergonomically, but it's pretty good. Um, it is. It actually works pretty well. You can get pretty close up to the blade. And, um, you know, pinch grip works really well. Uh, the tip is kind of, you know, upswept. And you got belly there. So it's not the best for, like, utility cutting and, and that kind of stuff. But it definitely gets the job done. It's fine. Uh, what else? The uh, Let's just talk about the... Well, I guess we'll hit the clip. For carry is fine. I carried this for two days. Clip works great. It feels like it's easy. It's going to be real easy to bend that clip on accident. Um, I did not have that happen, but it's just, I don't know. But maybe that's a good thing. It's just really thin down here. Maybe that's a good thing. But it works really, really well. I had no issues carrying it. Um, sounds. So it does not have the ting. So it's not like the factor where it has the ting. And I think that's probably because it has the assisted system different set of magnets, has a steel backspacer, um, not as tall of a grind. I don't know. There's a lot of factors there, I think. Ha, <laughs> get it? So, yeah, no uh, ting, which is fine, whatever. But the ting is awesome. The D10 on this is rather light, but the way the hole is placed and everything, 
it almost doesn't matter. It flicks really, really well. I mean, you can see it banging out, and I have no issue. Now, sometimes, you know, you kind of pussy it, and it, it, yeah, it's not the strongest detent, but it works, right? And the claim to fame on this knife is it's assisted. So there's magnets in there that basically, I guess, are repelling, so they're pushing. So when you release the lock, it kind of pushes it forward. Let's see if I can show you. And it's just a really slight bit. I mean, you can see. See that? And if you have it basically level, it'll lock up. If you have it tilted up a little bit, you might get lucky like that, and it'll lock up. But if I do this, it's not going to lock up. See? It's a certain point where it, it gets to lock up. If you have it down, it really flies out. So it really depends on uh, what you're doing. you got to let go of the button so it locks up. But it doesn't really assist you when you're flicking, I don't think. Like, there's nothing really here that... It doesn't, like, push it out, really. Um, so, for me, I would just not have the assist because on close, you have to overcome it. You see that? And while it's not, like, a lot of pressure, I mean, it's real easy to overcome it, you can't do drop shut. Like, you just can't. You have to swing it shut. You have to give it a little wrist down. Not a lot, but a little bit of a flick, and you'll get it to uh, pop in. Now, the problem I have with it is really not the fact that it's assisted. Like, that's whatever. Um, it's sort of gimmicky to me, but it's fine. You know, it's cool, and a lot of people think it's awesome. So, good for them, right? Um, not my thing. But what just happened right there is the problem I have where... If you don't necessarily get it all the way or whatever, it kind of just starts bouncing around here uh, in between open and close. It's just kind of loosey bouncy. And I've had a few times where I'm like going to close it like that and I didn't swing hard enough and it doesn't quite uh, shut. And so what that led me to do was never fidget with this while I'm not like looking. Uh, because I had a couple of close calls where I was just kind of fidgeting and not paying attention. And I didn't swing it down all the way. And I was like, oh, shit. And the blade was like right here. My fingers right here or whatever. Um, so it's just not something you want to fidget with mindlessly, like in the dark. I know that sounds dumb, but it's something a lot of us do. You know, late night, everybody's asleep. You're kind of doing your thing. You're just walking around the house on Instagram, flicking your knife or whatever, right? Watching a, a live but you'll just kind of have it bounce off sometimes like this. And then you don't, you just don't know where you're at, you know? Um, so that that's a downside for me. Um, minor detail. It's really fun. Um, I enjoy it a lot. Um, you can thumb flick it really well. So overall, really cool. I think it's a great second offering from Brian, I think. Uh, having the different blade shape really was a good idea because you have the people who love sheep's foot warning and then you have the people who love like a standard blade so we kind of hit all those people in two shots it was smart of him um, i just saw him uh, show off another design the veyron which is actually one that i worked on with him but then i guess he changed it to uh, something else so it looks cool um, again not necessarily my style with the cyberpunk sort of uh yeah i don't know but it's definitely cool and what he's doing is super unique and we should all definitely be paying attention so check out winter blade co i will link it down below uh shout out to brian thank you dude i appreciate you sending this my way uh let me know if you guys have any questions and uh there you go that's the winter blade factor the uh power tack m5 and the boker urban trapper premium I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.